Well, what do you know? Check it out! We're actually here! How's it going, guys? Welcome to the Blue Shifting, and welcome to the first episode of... I'm gonna botch it up. Crystalline. Crystalline. I don't know. I'm gonna say Crystalline, because that's how I've always said it. But welcome, welcome, one and all, to the newcomers. Welcome to the channel. To our old friends, welcome back. I, you know, first episodes are the chance for me to reintroduce myself. It's the time for me to shine, because a lot of times if people want to see a series, this is the place they go first, so... I uh, just wanted to let you know, I'm the Blue Shifting, I love visual novels, fell in love with them a few years ago, and right around the time I discovered them, I also decided to just do what I'd always wanted and start a YouTube channel where I could share them with people because, frankly, I never had anyone to talk about them with. And now, we have an awesome community, so please stick around, see if it's something you'd like, and I've got to give a quick shout out to my friends at Pixel Fade. they're the creators of this game, they made a, uh, they made a series before this I fell in love with called Ace Academy. One of my favorite visual novels I've played, especially in the dating sim variety. And like, I am just I've been waiting for this for so long. I was I was on board with the Kickstarter. I was watching patiently as all the parts came out. I purposely waited to make this until the official release because I wanted to try and make sure they got all the bugs out of the way so I could give it a full bore genuine test. And I'm very excited to be here and to be able to share this with you. And I just want to make sure to share this adventure with all of you. Now, uh, I have a few rules on my channel, so if you want to be so trapped down real quick, I'm just going to explain them. I don't want to steal the thunder, nor do I want to make developers angry. This channel is something that I find precious because I find it to be something I can share with you guys as part of a journey to explore character development, plot, and ultimately one of the greatest mediums of storytelling that's out there that sadly is so underappreciated just because I think a lot of people don't know to try it. But I want to make sure you understand a few things. First off is that I have permission to share this. I always seek permission for all of my series. I do my absolute best to make sure that they, they are okay with me doing streaming and to share this video. But because of that, I also want to clarify that I'm not doing this just because it's, oh, it's something fun to show out there. I hope to be able to share my passion for visual novels with other people because I discovered visual novels because of people who showed them on their channels. And I want to feel I want the developers to feel so, to feel that. So Pixel Fade, if you're out there, I really want you to understand I want to do everything in my power to help promote your your stuff. Because your stuff's awesome. I really hope you can understand and that as I play through the game, that I hope this is something that will inspire people to reach out to Pixel Fade for being a newer developer for visual novels. Give them your support, give them your love. And quite frankly, there may be some of you here who have never even heard of this game. I honestly challenge you to do two things. First off, watch the first episode or two really get a feel for what this game is. But if you like it, make sure to go support the developer, buy the game for yourself, experience the journey, and then come back and kind of go through it with me. I recently have been talking about my channel in a way where I see this as more of like a literature or book club. Because this is really what it's all about. We're sharing a story of a journey together. And you really are spoiling yourself the opportunity for the highs and lows of the emotional journey if you don't experience it on your own. But granted, I can't control what you do. But at the very least, just be aware 
that we want more of this kind of content and we need to support them and show them the love that we feel for it because I can already tell this is going to be a fun trip. Um, if you're curious about what else I've done on my channel, I just recently wrapped um, Star Steins Gate. I'm going through Muvlove Love Alternative. I've done the Muvlove Love Extra and Unlimited. They're some of the best high-ranked visual novels of the decade. I also do a lot of smaller series on my Friday show, so keep an eye out for those. I've also done things like Sunrider, uh, Doki Doki Literature Club, um, Sound of Drop, Fall into Poison, and there's many more to come. But, you know, you probably don't know that. I'm just ranting and rambling, but I want you to know that I love this stuff. Oh, the, uh, the, the final rule I want to tell you about is that if there are multiple endings, which I'm pretty sure this one has, we're only going to see one. There's no point in me showing every single thing of this game. There should be stuff for you to discover, too. I, of course, will play through all the endings on my own time, but we're going to go through one blind playthrough together, where I'm just going to make the choices I make and we see what happens. Um, Science Gate, if it's like Science Gate, we're going to see there's like a true ending. I'll probably just go for the true ending after I find my natural ending, but it really depends on the nature of the visual novel. If it has bad endings versus like a true ending. If this is more like Ace Academy, where it just you have multiple good endings, then I'll only show one. Because I want you guys to have something else to dig into for uh, into in this game as well. <sighs> but I, I okay, that that's all this, the piffle aside. Welcome here, welcome back. I'm excited to show this with you guys. And this is interesting because this is going to be one that's going to be very much voice acted. I imagine there might be some things I'll have to read, but more likely than not, I will have to I will be able to give my vocal cords a break, which will mean your ears will be blessed because you hear actual good voice actors rather than me trying to do all the crazy voices. Which, I do admit, it's kind of fun, but I don't know. We're just going to explore this together and we're going to see what's going to happen. So I'm going to go tweak some of the options real quick, trying to make sure that we have good balance between the music and the vocals. Make sure that everything's as lined up as possible, and then we'll jump right in. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today. Hopefully I can catch your interest and that you enjoy this ride with me through now and through every Wednesday from here on out until the end of the game. So thank you so much, I'll see you in a sec. Alright, everything looks pretty good, let's jump right in. Thank you so much, and here we go. Enter the mail and season. See, that's the other thing. One of the best things about Pixel Fade is um, in uh, Ace Academy, you get to really feel like you're you in the game. You get to really feel like you're making the crucial decisions, which sometimes can make a plot suffer because it can make everything feel a little bland, but Ace Academy did a fantastic job. I've got high hopes for this. However, we will be resurrecting the old, old favorite. My pseudonym, the character we play when we jump into these games is going to be Protag. And of course, Innist for the last name. He's returned from Ace Academy, or at least a different one. Oh my gosh, and that's from Ace Academy too. <laughs> the library is more quiet than I would have expected at this time of night. The only sound is the gentle hum of the air conditioner. So, I mean, I doubt this is just like a mistake. I'm imagining that we are probably a student at Ace Academy. I doubt we're our original character, although we might be. Uh, how did he look? I'm trying to remember him in the, the opening sequence. Maybe. I don't know. I don't think so, though. Whoa, that was too close. I blink my eyes wide open and stifle a yawn as I stretch and wake myself up. Focus. Just wake up, boy. Finals are just around the corner, so I can't afford to slack off. Glancing around me, I notice that I'm the only person left in the study cubicles. It's getting pretty late. I'll go back to the dorms as soon as I finish the last chapter. Yep, so this is definitely a different uh, main character. I flip through the book. Only a few more pages to go. I can do this. Study time. Steal my resolve. I refocus on my textbook. And apparently that was uh, the first mistake. I'm studying. That's very rarely a mistake, but you know, there's a first time for everything. The words on the book blur together as my eyelids grow heavy. I fight to keep my eyes open, but my lids continue to droop. I'll just rest them for a second. Something jerks me awake and my, when, when my eyes blink open. A bright light illuminates the room, blinding me until all I can see is a stark whiteness. I throw my arms over my eyes to shield them from the light. Yeah, there it goes. After a few seconds pass, the light seems to dim, but it doesn't feel like the same fluorescent glow of the library bulbs. Carefully, I unwind and bring my arms down, squatting at, squinting at the pale blue sky. Oh boy. So, so far, so good. A mild breeze tosses my hair, blades of grass tickle my neck as they wave in the, in the wind. Where am I? I'm about to push myself up off the ground when something pops into view. A round blue blob with two dark eyes blinks at me. It's a slime! Alright, I've heard lots about you and your cuteness. I'm sure we're about to just have lots of aww moments. Boy? It bobs slightly, like pudding. 
Ow. When it notices my stare, it opens its small mouth and takes a dainty bite of my nose. Ow! Hey! The creature's bite doesn't sting, but it feels like a cold splash of water. Before I can take another, I scramble to my feet. The creature tumbles off my head and falls to the ground. Once it lands, it shakes itself with a gelatinous tremble, clearly unfazed. Well, we're just in another world. Just boom. Of course, that's how these stories tend to go, right? I mean, I mean, we had ReZero where he was walking across the street to the convenience store. We had Konosubo where he jumped in front of a tractor and like scared himself to death. Uh, well, at least that one had like death as a portal to another world. And Log Horizon was just kind of like, a, oh, now I'm in the game now. So, let's see. And I wonder what brought us here, of course. There's got to be some mechanism. I mean, was it the book? Did we die of boredom? That's possible, too. It hops onto my foot and opens its mouth again. I quickly shake it off. It rolls off my foot into the dirt and it rides itself again. Boy, boy. Aww. It's probably just hungry. But not for my nose, please. Puts on a uh, pups and continues to watch me, but doesn't attempt another bite. What is that thing? Boy? It cocks its head as if wondering the same about me. That's unsettling. I take us. I take it in scat. <laughs> I take in the scattering of trees around me. The tall branches kiss the sky. There's a winding dirt trail which weaves through the trees. As I follow with my gaze, I see smoke bill blowing out of a th out of a thatched out of thatched roofs of a village in the far distance. I don't see that in this skybox, but. The art's on par so far, it looks nice. A little watercolory, but that's, honestly, that's fine. Especially because it's done so well. Where am I? Last thing I remember is studying at the library. That's it, I must have fallen asleep and now I'm dreaming. Boy? I glanced at the blue creature. What? <laughs> My response, it leaps up. Boy, boy. All right, this thing is officially adorable. Whoa! I scramble away from it and land back on the ground with a soft thud. That thing can jump pretty high, I need to be careful. What's your deal? It leaves again and I again retreat. Stop that! Dodge as it jumps, then I begin to run. To my surprise, the blob keeps pace with a series of nimble bounces. Boy, boy. Um, yeah, sorry, buddy. I think you've got a friend now. Seriously, stay back! I must have one long leap and I turn around the, uh, around the corner of a sturdy tree to avoid it. I didn't notice the other person until too late. Uh oh. Now, let's see how cliche we're gonna have this intro. Well, you painfully collide, and I lose my balance before toppling over. <laughs> yep, so far it's a girl. Fortunately, my hands catch myself, protecting my fall. When I open my eyes, I see a woman. Uh... Ooh, hello. Nope, don't, don't look too far down there. Her eyes are scrunched shut, and her mouth is twisted into grimace. Her long blonde hair is splayed out around her. She is very cute. She lets out a small groan. She blinks open her eyes and fixes her gaze on me. Um, hi. <laughs> Here comes the pixel fade. Uh, let's see, so there's like the normal response, there's the, um, the thoughtful response, and then there's the... Well, you know, I mean, we're all closet perverts. This is just the not-so-closet pervert. The dream becomes a wet dream. Jeez. My bad. I made her gaze, I fly face flushes, I push, push myself to my feet. I I'm so sorry. Are you hurt? I extend my hand. She hesitantly accepts it, and I help her up. Just oh my sorry, gosh. But otherwise, I'm fine. Are you hurt? Interesting. Okay, so I knew this was kind of a more of a kinetic novel, but that's very... I don't know. Like, I wonder how they do this. This is something that just technically I've always been curious about. To try and give, like, the an animation, live animation feeling to, um, uh, to an image. I just don't even know what goes into that, but, like... I mean, you give her like the slight, like, slight movements, the rise and fall of the chest for like breathing, and I imagine we're gonna get a lot more advanced animations, which is make quite honestly, it's breathtaking. Also, kind of reminds me of those like, there's like, there's that thing that like reads your facial structures and lets you like talk like somebody. Is that maybe it's based on that technology? No, I'm fine. I'm sorry again. I should have paid more attention where I was going. It's partially my fault. Oh, there's the jiggle! Holy crap! <laughs> Creature's right by my foot again. Are you serious? You're still here. The woman looks surprised. A pongo. Oh, a pongo. Jeez, all that Pokemon last night is making me see things. Oh, Pokemon. Obviously, can't be can't be putting the trademarks out there. Sorry about that, but like I just read it like it was supposed to be. <laughs> oh, a man. Close enough. Boy, boy. 
The pongo bobs up and down on my foot and nudges me with its head. Oh, he's a cute one. He? Yeah, you can tell by the shape of his eyes. Really? We haven't seen more than like a two seconds of the guy. Where is he? Oh. I think he wants you to hold him. He's trying to eat me. It kind of was, but honestly, it's cute. I mean, we ran from it mostly because we're terrified of something that's frankly weird, but now that we know it's probably not dangerous, I think it's cute. How can you tell? He's not being subtle about it. Oh, right, well, fair point. Pongo hops on my foot and looks up at me. Okay. I bend down and he bounces into my palm. He feels cool to the touch and surprisingly solid for being kind of gelatinous. It's actually, it's funny because like, I just really gotten into that new, the newer anime is like the, the reincarnate, the time I was reincarnated to a slime, like having flashbacks to that right now. I've been enjoying that anime so far. Oh, he's so cute. He chirps happily and he rolls over in my palm. Wah! The woman leaves in and uses a finger to gently tickle the pongo. He chirps again and shivers. What is even happening? <laughs> we literally have no reasonable explanation for why we're here, but we're just kind of going with the flow so far. Oh, his laugh is so adorable. So he continues to tickle him and he rolls over from laughing. <laughs> She stops tickling him and pets him on his head instead. He snuggles against her hand and sighs contentedly. Boy. Using her other hand, she raises her gauntlet and seems to offer it to the pongo. The pongo stares at it. Then he turns his head away and hops onto my shoulder before nestling against me. Ah, uh, so see, we already know who the favorite is. Boy. It's about being the protagonist. A pongo who refuses magic energy? Wait a minute. Are you a mage? Um, I level 110 frost mage. <laughs> Of course not, I'm a warrior. That's not a real occupation. I don't know. Sure. Uh, what I, I, I should, should, I don't know. Uh, I'm sure, level 110, that's like, my, that's why I play World of Warcraft, right? <laughs> yeah, I play mage in MMORPG. MMORPG? You keep saying such strange things. Yeah, it's gonna be my MO for a while, I think. She holds up her gauntlet and a faint pale light glow. She pulses rhythmically, and then she holds it closer to me. It quickens until the pulses almost look like one long pulse. She blinks in surprise. Wait, this heightened energy activity, it's you? Sure. <laughs> she analyzes the magic swirling thing in her gauntlet. I don't see a discharger on you. So then, how is it possible for you to have such a high magical energy reading? You're like, you're, you're like a mumbly there, I can't read behind your fingers. Are you carrying crystals? Uh, the, I, I gotta admit, the kinetic animation is really good. Is this a sting operation? <laughs> I, I'm gonna be like, no. Not that I know of. Hmm. She looks me over again. Never mind. It doesn't God, look that like jiggle. Jeez. Or anything for that matter. I don't know what's going on right now. I was in the library studying for finals and somehow woke up here. Oh, are you from the Mage Academy? The what? Mage Academy. I rub my temples. Okay, I think I've dozed off, dozed off for long enough. Time to wake up now. <laughs> she blinks in confusion. You are awake. No, this is a dream. She frowns. I can assure you this is not a dream. Uh, time for the pinch test, or I'm not convinced you'd... No, you don't run the woman this hot in reality. The time for the pinch test. Could this actually be real? She definitely seems real. That fall certainly hurt. I surreptitiously, surreptitiously pinched myself and tried to hide my wince. Here's the funny thing though. My dreams are freaking crazy vivid. Like, I can feel temperature in them. I feel like I'm falling when I'm falling. I feel like I'm flying when I'm flying. Like, I mean, granted, there are elements that probably aren't real that I'm just, like, glossing over when I'm dreaming, but for me, I sometimes really wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Mm. Well, the pinch is real, the pain's real. I'm not convinced. Despite what you're saying, I'm not convinced. Mm, okay. Ah, jeez! She pulls her hand back and strikes me soundly in the arm. Ow! Still think this is a dream? <sighs> All right, maybe. <laughs> I'm not sure about it than before. She punched me again in the same spot. How about now? God, jeez, you're fine. You might be onto something here. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's not a dream. 
You gloats. I knew you'd eventually come to your senses. You got to beating me, senseless. So this place isn't a dream? Where are we? We're in Meadow Hill. That doesn't answer my question. Meadow Hill? Where's that? It's a part of the Kingdom of Havenguard, of course. Once again, does not help. <laughs> Havenguard? She looks at me like I'm crazy. You're the crazy one! Well, I think we're the crazy one, but why would we assume that? It's the largest of the three kingdoms. I'm from Japan, I assume, and if it were from Ace Academy, this character would be from Japan. Actually, where are you from? Oh, I'm from New York. <laughs> Never mind, he's just in New York. That's funny though. I'm in New York. Not the city, but state. New York? Yeah, you know, part of the USA. You S.A. USA? Right. No, the United States of America. The United States of what? Never mind that for now. If you sure. don't have any crystals, and you don't have a discharger... I'm uh, just that cool. Have you cast it recently? Shake my head. Then the amount of energy reading doesn't add up. She raises her chin on her hand as she thinks. Well, I can think of the problem that, like, I literally was, like, in a library a little bit ago, and now I'm here. I imagine teleportation takes magical energy. A shiver runs through me as reality begins to sink in. This really isn't a dream. Uh, any ideas? She shakes her head. Maybe the Mage Academy can provide answers. Yeah, why not? Mage Academy? That's a start. Plus, hey, you know, if magic is real, let's get our fingers in that pie right away. Sounds good to me. How do I get there? Oh, it's in the center of Illumia. <sighs> Once again, just saying places and names doesn't help. Uh, where? Illumia. You follow the path going north until you arrive at the crossroads. Then you head... Uh, her wife's trails off as you notice in my expression. Like, probably my expression like... Uh. <laughs> I'm actually heading back there now. You can come along if you want. Yes, please. As I contemplate her offer, I look her over again. Can I trust her? Her posture is naturally straight, and she gives off an air of authority. She didn't mention she was out here on some sort of official investigation. Plus, she seems friendly enough. Besides, if I don't go with her, then I'll be wandering around on my own. Chances of me finding this mage academy alone, running into any unsavory people, are not promising. Can't risk that. I need to find a way back home. I nod. Thanks. I was like, there really was a no like, real actual choice there, obviously. Like, you'd be an idiot not to go with at least somebody who's relatively friendly. Thanks. I'm protagonist, by the way. I'm Leanna. Leanna Dawn. Leanna Dawn. Cool name. Nice to meet you. I held my hand for her to shake, but she just stares at it. After keeping my hand out for a few seconds, I begin to feel awkward. Her expression changes to curiosity as she gingerly takes my hand. I grin broadly as I shake her hand firmly. She's a bit startled, but when our gazes meet, she matches my smile. It's nice to meet you, too. I look at her questioningly as she continues to shake my hand. Just, just, there's just a plethora of awkwardness here. She slips her hand away and blushes. Shall we get going, then? Ready when you are. I was about to, I have a little bit of a cold, so I might be doing this a lot. Liana nods and brings us back to, uh, up to the path. She then walks in the direction of the village. The pongo follows us, staying a step behind. We travel for quite some time together. One thing leads to another. It's been a pretty silence. I wonder if I should say something. Mm -hmm. I think, honestly, if I were to first start to guess, I would ask, like, because we saw the gauntlet do something really interesting, I would want to ask about it. Without seeming too suspicious, I tried to get a better look at her gauntlet. What was it that she was doing with it earlier? Leanna noticed me staring and shifts uncomfortably. Are you okay? Yeah, I, I was just curious about your gauntlet. Oh, my manipulator? Sure. What is that? Um, sure. <laughs> I'm already channeling this character. It's how we use energy to interact with the elements around us. Okay, so you are a mage. Wait, so you mean you can cast spells? I suppose that's one way to phrase it. Whoa, can you show me something cool? Um, like what? I don't know, something that normal people can't do? Uh, cast magic missile! Cast the magic missile! That's the super dork. I'm gonna go with anything. I don't know, do anything. Hmm. Leanna push pauses while she thinks. Then her face brightens. Okay, the jiggle got a little crazy there for a second. Calm down, you two. She lifts her gauntlet and points it towards Pongo. He levitates in the air, much to the Pongo's surprise. As he hovers in the air, he looks in awe around him and opens his mouth trying to eat the air. Because, of course, that's what he would do. Liana giggles and gently places him back down. 
That's awesome! <laughs> Whoa, that was amazing! Ah, it's like saying that might be lame. No, do you realize even if you just had that ability, that could be freaking useful. But I imagine she could do so much more if she wanted. Liana smiles shyly as she blushes, a, brushes a straight hair, lock of hair behind her ear. It was nothing. What else can you do? There's a lot more my manipulator can do, but I think it's best if I conserve the energy for now. Why not? That makes sense. So, what is this Pongo, anyway? We got behind us again, just as expected, the Pongo hops along. So, the Pongo's still following us. Liana glasses back and grins. That's not too surprising. Why not? Pongos are attracted to magical energy. That's why it was so strange that it showed no interest in my manipulator. It's still following us, though. It's following you. Ah, uh, yeah, I figured. <laughs> my readings showed you're full of magical energy. As far as the Pongo is concerned, you're a buffet. I see he was trying to eat me! Huh. So I think over what Liana just said, I have to look at the Pongo one more time. This time he looked right back at me. His eyes crinkle as they're splitting into a huge grin. I also just thought of a terrifying situation. I mean, he's cute and adorable. What if we come across like a million of these suckers and they all decided, oh, I'm lunch now? That I probably would drown. Boy, boy. Uh, he leaves up in the air and reaches my height of my waist. Whoa! He jumps high again. Leanna giggles. I think he's tired of hopping. Ah, uh, he can carry him. I guess it can be kind of hard to keep up when you're so much smaller than us. I hold up my hands and the pongo hops right into my palm. But he doesn't stop there. Before I can reach, react, he hops into my shoulder and jumps again to land on the top of my head. Ah, uh, once again is adorable. I feel a cool wiggle in my hair. Leanna giggles again. What's he doing? <laughs> Nothing. He's just so happy. She reaches out a finger to stroke the pongo, who chirps contentedly. Leanna's smile broadens. Then she clears her throat and she tries to take on a more serious expression. Her steps quicken and she resumes walking. Alright, now finally, what brought you here? So, not that I'm complaining, but what exactly were you doing in the field? The field? Where you found me. Oh, there have been rumors of high energy readings around Meadow Hill, so I was sent to investigate. Hmm. It's probably unlikely that they were all caused by us, considering we probably just arrived, unless we were doing unconscious for several days, but I imagine we would have been found by someone else by then. I had already checked out the surrounding area, and there'd been no clear source for all that excess energy... until today. Okay. When you met me. She nods. I hadn't been in the field for very long before you found me, though. You might be a byproduct of whatever created the energy spike in the first place. Oh yay, being a byproduct is so fun. What do you think I what what do you think that was? I'm not sure. I haven't seen readings of that level before. Hmm. The Mage Academy should be able to help explain. Alright. Wonder what it takes to become a mage. So, besides magic, what else does the Mage Academy teach? Oh, all the basics. How to use a manipulator, how to control your energy. The many usages and differences between crystals and spheres. Interesting. Crystals and spheres, huh? What exactly is the crystal stuff you keep mentioning? You mean the difference between crystals and crystal spheres? Well, when we refer to crystals, we mean the raw crystals, whereas crystal spheres are the usable refined state. Okay, that makes sense. That's helpful, but I meant crystals in general. She stares at me and narrows her eyes as if trying to judge if I'm serious. It's the power source for, well, everything. I look blankly at her. You don't use crystals where you come from? No, not at all. I guess, okay, so I could do that. I just realized I hadn't clicked any of the buttons yet, and I can see this. I'm a little scared to push it. Okay, so that's the menu. Cool. Awesome. Excellent. Okay. Where's crystal where you come from? Um, no. <laughs> Her mouth falls open. She looks at me in bewilderment. With no crystals, what else do you use to power things? Lots of stuff. I count on my fingers. Uh, the sun, water, wind, nuclear fission, fossil fuse, fuels, and coal and oil. Her eyes widen with each item I list. She's about to speak, but I'm not finished. Geothermal, wave, tidal, hydrogen. Okay, okay. She shakes her head incredulously. I get it. You have your own methods of energy. Many, many methods. Yeah. Leanna's eyes sparkle as she falls into a pensive smile. Silence. A small, a small smile plays at her lips while she considers what I've said. I might have overwhelmed her a little, but she actually seems interested in all her methods of harnessing energy. 
I listen for the sound of wildlife as we continue walking. I can hear the usual song of birds and the faint of whoosh of wings flapping in the air. Occasionally there's a rustle amid the trees. I even swat out the bugs buzzing around my eyes. It all feels very familiar, reminding me of home. Liana clears her throat. So, you're from USA? <laughs> yeah. U-S-A, but yeah. Which kingdom is that in? Uh, how should I phrase this? In the kingdom of North America. She frowns and scratches her neck. I'm a little ashamed to say I'm not familiar with that place. Where is it? On Earth? <laughs> okay, time to take a different approach. Let me see if I can explain. Alright, tell me, where are we now? In Meadow Hill. And where is that? In the kingdom of Havengard. And where is Havengard? In the land of Asaria. And what is that part of? Terra, of course. Okay, so Terra is my Earth. She pauses as, she, as her words sink in, then she gasps. Wait, are you not from Terra? Nope. From what I've heard so far, I am not. She looks concerned. How did you get here? That's the question of the hour! <laughs> That's what I'm hoping the Mage Academy can tell me. Right, but I mean, how did you come to Meadow Hill specifically? Do you remember anything before you were in the field? Uh, just in the library. Think back. I was studying in the library and I've been ex ex extra tired because that same day I had my evening, evening classes. And I still remember everything about me and my past. Yeah. Hmm. Well, at least we know you don't have amnesia. I nod. She laughs back into silence, looking thoughtful. I have a lot to think about myself. My head is swimming with everything I've learned so far. Although there are some similarities between Terra and Earth, I've only scratched the surface on all the differences. I really hope the Majors Academy can help explain what's going on, and more importantly, how I can get back home. The Pongo flips in front of my eyes. I carefully scoop him back into, into place on my head. Whoa, what happened there? Did you slip? Poi, poi. Is it my imagination or did that poi poi sound a little sheepish? Liana looks over and grins. You were trying to get a good look at our friend here, weren't you? I feel a movement on my head as I assume the Pongo nods. Looks like someone got a little adventurous and lost his footing. Poi. <laughs> yeah, I have a little chuckle as Liana giggles. Once the Pongo is secured, we continue walking. Interesting, interesting. Well, they've established the beginnings of the framework pretty well. The sun dips in the sky and bathes the tips of the trees in a soft glow. My feet ache and protest with each step I take, and the legs are tightening after all that walking. Ooh, nice! I like this feel. This is nice. Uh, finally, we come upon the perimeter of the village. Liana gr grins as she leads me through the gates. Here we are! Meadow Hill Village! I take the time to catch my breath and discreetly rest my burning muscles. Lana hardly seems affected by the long trek. How was this close? <laughs> I thought you said this place was close. It is. It's only a half a day's walk. Oh, fetch. I wait for her to say she's joking, but she's completely serious. How was that close? We should have just used Uber. <laughs> Sorry? I shake my head. Nothing. She cocks her head curi curiously, then shrugs. Let's continue. We can rest at the inn tonight. So if we can find some natural resources that we happen to be an engineer, we could do some pretty cool stuff. Alright. As she resumes walking, I, and I ignore my screaming legs and follow her. The village is still bustling with people, even at the time, this time of day. I suppose they're gathering in the last errands before nightfall. For the most part, everyone seems to focus on their own tasks. They barely even glance at Liana, but when their gazes are drawn to me, they don't look away. In fact, their steps slow and they crane their necks as we pass. Now I know how an animal feels at a zoo. Now is it the pongo on our heads or are we we wearing weird clothes? Liana overhears my muttering and watches the people around us. It's your clothes. They're very peculiar. What? I'm wearing as normal as where I'm from. Even though the stairs are directed at me, Liana seems equally uncomfortable. Okay, new plan. Let's stop by the shops before they close. We don't need to draw attention to ourselves. Is that a monkey? One second. I instinctively pat the back pocket where I keep my wallet. Now Delta will accept any cards here, or dollars. I don't have any money. That's okay. I'll take care of it. Aww, that's very sweet. That's really generous of you. I like a girl's pad. Don't make a big deal. Ah, you know what? I don't... Eh. I'm gonna say it's generous of you, because I mean it is. Thank you. I really appreciate it. It's understandable given your circumstances. I'll pay you back once I can. Liana smiles and nods. 
Now the change of directions that leads me towards an adjacent street. There are rows of quaint shops lining both sides of the road. I read the signs as we walk. Edward's Apothecary, Blackstone, Blackstone Forge, Dragon Scale Armory. At least everything's in English. How awkward would it be if we could literally not speak the language? Which would be more accurate, but hey, you know, it's magical transfer into World of Wonder, so I mean, can't be blamed. Huh. What is it? I was just thinking how convenient it is everything is in English here. <laughs> Gosh darn it, I can't stop. English? I should have expected a question based on how our previous conversations have gone, but I'm still a little taken aback. It's what we're speaking now. We're speaking common. Oh, this really is like D D, isn't it? What? Leanna pauses in front of a shop and peers inside. Satisfied, she motions me for me to follow. Never mind. Come on in. We're here. I step into the shop, and the first thing I notice is the overpowering, musty smell of leather. It's not surprising, considering the walls are lined with different types of leatherware. Ooh, this looks cool. No, this doesn't look like a leather shop, honestly. A small elderly man emerges from the back. A pair of round glasses sit on his nose with an apron hanging around his neck. Welcome. Please, take a look around. His smile falters when he notices me. Leanna clears her throat. We're looking for a new wardrobe for my friend here. Yes, yes, of course. Shopkeeper blinks back and re to reality and resumes his pitch. Well, you've come to the right place. We tan our hides and stitch the pieces ourselves. You won't find any finer quality than here. Lana smiles politely and strolls towards the, the selections. I check out two seemingly identical, identical leather vests, both of which are, are marked at different prices. I really can't see a difference between the two. Maybe they boost different stats. <laughs> you really isn't the video game mindset. Hey, Liana. She turns around. Which one of these will increase my... Hmm. Well, fetch. What would I want to increase? So they... Well... Uh... What kind of... And this, is a really, this could be a question of like the type of build a character we're going for here, honestly. Strength, defense, dexterity, intelligence, focus. Ooh. I don't know. I'd go with dexterity. I like being on the move. Dexterity. Um, I suppose leather armor will allow for greater range of motion while still providing decent protection. That's the benefit of the armor type. I mean, dexterity. She blinks. So none of these raises any stats? Yeah, it gives me a weird look. Yes, please do. Do your clothes where you come from raise stats? Only if you consider cool points to be a stat. She looks as confused as before. Never mind. She smiles as we continue perusing. One by one, Liana and I pick up my new outfit. Once all the pieces have been chosen, she goes to haggle with the shopkeeper. I turn out, the, I turn out, tune out the discussion to watch the people passing by. Their clothing are simple in design, meant to be no more functional than aesthetic. To my surprise, everyone walks around armed. This village doesn't seem too dangerous, but looks can be deceiving. Why don't you get changed now? There's a space in the back to give you some privacy. I nod and take the clothes from her. Once I've ensured, it's in, it's ensured privacy, I quickly get changed. Alright, let's see the new us, hopefully. Luckily, these clothes have pockets so I can transfer everything over. I pull my wallet, deck of cards, and loose change. Next is my phone. Hey, why didn't we think of trying that before? I try and turn it on just to see if it'll work, but it doesn't react. The battery must be dead. Aww. I get the feeling they don't have wall chargers here. Shrugging it off, I slip my phone into my pocket too. When I emerge, Liana gives me a one over. How do I look? She grins and nods in satisfaction. Wow, look at you. Just like a native. This look suits you. I match her grin. Well, thanks. Let's go find the inn now. Sounds good. She heads out to the shop and I follow her. Pretty straightforward day in a new world. Actually, maybe we can stop by the armory? She pauses and looks at me. Looks curiously at me. Armory, you want to get a weapon? Your question is careful, cautious. Well, the goal is to blend in, right? It's weird that the person walking, that walking in leather armor, is traveling unarmed. I look like a hostage or something. Hmm. You do have a point. Plus, it could come in handy. Mm, why do I not like the sound of that? Do you know how to use a weapon? Again, although her voice holds no hostility, I can sense her caution. I practice kendo competitively. She blinks. It's a type of sword fighting where I come from. I see. Liana falls silent as she gazes out the street. After an extended pause, she nods. So she's not quite as trusting as she appeared to be at first. 
We enter the forge where rows of blades ranging from long swords to short daggers hangs on the wall. All the blades look fairly plain, but the steel edges glint dangerously amidst the warm glow of the forge. Unlike the previous shopkeeper, the metalsmith ignores us as he pounds a red hot blade. Sparks jump from the clanging metal, reminding me of fireflies. Leanna lets me browse the swords. I reach for one that catches my eye. You know what's catching my eye? There's freaking pistols on the wall. How are those? Oh, they got crystals in the hilts. Ooh, that sounds like fun. I gently remove it from the shelf. I, I miscalculate its weight and drop it. Still scrapes, scratches the ground with a sharp screech. The metalsmith pauses his work to glower a warning. Leanna looks over in shock. Careful! I quickly write the sword back up and grip it tightly. Leanna now watches me with intrigue. Is this the first time you've held a sword? <sighs> I lived broke. <laughs> practice ones only. Nothing beyond wooden swords. I took a practice swing and fumbled the sword. Luckily, I tightened my grip and get it under control. Leanna looks uneasily. I swing again. The movement flows naturally. As the sword cuts through the air with a sharp thwing, nice word there, I can't help but admire how smoothly it slices. This is a high quality craftsmanship. Let's go with this one. As before, Leanna discusses the shopkeeper. When she returns, I strap the sword to my belt. Wow, this is going very smoothly. We make one more st uh, sh we, we make one more sh stop. Wow, I kept wanting to say shop there, what the heck. One more stop to gather supplies for our travel. By the time we're finished, the sun is set and the darkness blankets the sky. The town is aglow with soft lights glinting from within houses and lampposts on the street. As we pass the lamppost, I peek inside and see a small crystal shining brilliantly. Using the lights to guide us, we find the inn. Now here's another interesting I, I'm, I wonder if those are supposed to be like the trails of like shooting stars up in the sky or what? Because like they look like vapor trails for planes, but I doubt they have planes here. I take a seat with one of my crude tables where Liana talks to the innkeeper behind the door behind the bar. There are a scattering of other patrons, mostly men who sit alone nursing a tankard of what I assume to be ale. I stifle a yawn. Now that I've had a chance to sit down, I feel the full weight of my fatigue. Luckily, Leanna returns and hands me a key. This is your room for the night. It's right next to mine. Oh, that's good. Thanks. She nods. They should be coming out with our dinner soon. Then we should get to sleep. We have an early start tomorrow. My stomach grumbles in anticipation. Sorry. Leanna smiles as she sits in the empty stool next to mine. Our, me our meals arrive and I stare at the bowl before me. It's a goopy thick stew that looks about as appetizing as dog food, but it smells pretty good. Um, what is this? It's stew. What kind of stew? Rabbit. Mmm, that actually sounds good. A brief image of a cute fluffy bunny flashes across my eyes. Is something wrong? Is it normal stew? <laughs> Meat is murder! <laughs> <laughs> I eat GMO, all natural, vegan, certified, gluten free, 100% whole grain, non trans fat, grass fed, no preservative, organic, preserved meats. No. All good. I'm all about trying new foods. Nothing's wrong. It's fine. Thanks. I take a tentative bite of my stew. How is it? I'd say it's probably amazing. I think it sounds amazing. This is even better than I expected. Liana grins as she digs in. I finish eating and Liana clears her bowl. Then the two of us head upstairs. She pauses in front of her room, and I stop in front of mine. Good night. Good night. I'm about to enter my room when I hear a small voice. Polly? Oh, right! Looking down, I see a pongo back at my feet. Now that I think about it, ever since we entered the village, he's been awfully silent. Have you been following us this whole time, or did you lose us and find us again? The pongo blinks twice and bounces. Polly, Polly. Take that as a yes. Pongos aren't exactly welcomed everywhere. Really? Why? Why is that? Well, they absorb the energy around them, including crystals which are used to light lampposts or other similar items. Great. So they don't—they would be like pests. It's funny. So the way these crystals are working, it's very reminiscent. If you've read the Brandon Sanderson book, which I always talk about because they're my favorite books, um, the Stormlight Archive series, they have um, they have a nature of magic called Stormlight, where they can take gemstones and they can capture this energy by placing these stones out in what's called high storms, which are these super powerful storms that sweep across the land. But then they use them for lighting and for magical properties and everything. It's really a fascinating system, and I'm seeing a lot of parallelism here. Ah, I can see how that would be bad. I think this guy knew to stay out of sight once we came in here. What if someone sees him here? As long as he doesn't stray too close to a crystal, he'll be fine. People only make a fuss when it looks like their crystal might be drained. Got it. 
So he reaches towards the pongo. Do you want to sleep with me tonight? What a question. <laughs> the pongo struggles, snuggles against my leg. Leanna sighs. I thought as much. She opens her door and flashes me one last smile. Sleep well. Thanks. She disappears into her room. I open my door and steps through. Pongo perks up. Poi, poi. Alright, let him in. Step away from the door and Pongo hops in. As I close the door behind him, he continues to hop around the room as I've been inspecting it. Yawning widely, I collapse into the bed. The Pongo continues to circle the room. Are you looking for a good place to sleep? Poi. He suddenly leaps up and lands on my bed. He then bounces at the foot of the bed and wiggles himself in a cozy nest by creating a small crater on top of the blanket. Can't help but grin at the little guy. He's really cute. He really is cute. He reminds me of my cat. Good night, Pongo. Boy, boy. Oh. And whoever the voice actor or actress who did the voice, well done. I roll over in bed, and it's not long before I'm fast asleep. Interesting. A knock on my door jolts me awake. I don't think we're going to play too much longer, just because I don't like making my episodes too long, especially at first. But come on, we've got to see what's happening in the morning. I sit straight up in bed and barely notice a tiny yelp as the pongo tumbles to the floor. Uh, hello? The knocking stops. It's Leanna. Are you about ready? I just woke up. <laughs> Rub my eyes and blink the feeble rays of light outside. Well, what time is it? It's past dawn. We need to get a move on if we want to make a good time. Dawn? There's no good reason anyone should be awake at this hour. No, that's not me anymore. <laughs> it used to be me. But my goodness, I don't, I don't have a choice now. I have to lay back down in bed when the knocking starts again. Alright, alright, I'll be there in a minute. The noise stops. I yawn and stretch and notice Pongo on the floor. What are you doing on the floor, buddy? Aren't you sleeping in the bed? The Pongo wiggles and shoots me an accusatory look. Poy, 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 poy. I'm sorry. I glance at the slight indentation on my pillow and back at the blue mass on the floor. Sorry, right, didn't mean to knock you off. He looks cautiously at me, then hops into the bed and onto my head. Poy, poy. Then he nips at my hair and then jiggles. Guess that means he's forgiven me. Probably because I fed him breakfast and eating my energy. I push myself to my feet and begin getting dressed. Once I've grabbed all my things, I push the door open and nearly collide with Liana. Oh! Are you ready to go? Yep. Liana nods and then leads the way out of the inn. No breakfast? I follow her through town as we head north. It's a lot quieter than when we first arrived at the town and gradually begins to wake up. We don't run into too many people on the street. Although the shops aren't open yet, I can see the shopkeeper is busy preparing for the day. Right before we reach the edge of town, a guard stops us. There's been heightened bandit activity reported on these roads. Ooh. Liana's brow seat creases. Are the roads closed? No, but until we get a handle on the bandit activity, we're advising everyone to stay in town. Hmm. We can't stay. Where are you headed? We're headed to Illumia. The guard notices the sigil on Liana's manipulator. You're a mage knight? She nods. As the guard turns to focus on me, he, I draw his attention to the blade on my hip. He nods gruffly and then moves out of the way. Just be careful out there. Thank you. Alright, she motions for me to follow her. Great, we're gonna have our first combat, I'm sure. Once we're back in the familiar dirt path, I take one last look at the Meadow Hill Village before refocusing on the road ahead of me. What do we do with our old clothes? Our trek along the path is peaceful. The forest gradually uh, awakens with the bird song and scuttling of woodland animals. Having grown up in the city, the sounds of nature still startle me as I glance at every rustle of the leaves. Liana, though, seems unfazed. Her eyes routinely survey her surroundings. Suddenly, she freezes. I nearly bump into her. What the? Shh. Uh-oh. I fall silent as she listens. When, we, when she speaks, her voice is a whisper. Did you hear that? I strain my ears, listening for anything out of place. Then I hear the voices among the trees. Bandits. Bandits? A strangled scream pierces the air, scaring a flock of birds into flight. Someone might be in danger! Oh, fetch! <laughs> our previous caution abandoned, Liana sprints towards the sound and I fall on her heels. Well, that could be easily be a trap, too. It will take cover as the trees open up, revealing a man in a trench coat surrounded by five bandits. One or more bandit lies motionless on the ground. Upon seeing their fallen comrade, the bandits all unsheath their weapons. Three of them hold long swords and two of them point guns. The trench-coated man doesn't stir. His dark hair falls over his eyes and I can't see his face. Oh, it looks like we got an edge lord here. He won't get away from us this time. Take him out. The man pushes open his coat and draws two guns as the bandits converge. 
Yeah, this is uh, getting some strong vibes of a uh, Reaper here. Liana sets her jaw. Stay here. As soon as the words fall from her lips, she races out from the trees. Her hair whips behind her, and her white coattails blow in the graceful arc. She moves faster than any human, as if the air is pushing her forward instead of dragging her down. Her gauntlet hand clenches and a blue sphere glows and disappears as she smashes her fist into the nearest bandit. <laughs> he flies away from her and crashes against a tree before crumpling in a heap. A mage knight? She must be with him. Or she's after the bounty. Take her out too. Yeah, sure. She just launched you across the field. That's gonna go great. The mysterious man fires a hail of purple blast at the bandits, catching one of them in the chest. Leanna deflects the sword from another bandit with her own blade. I can't just sit here and do nothing. I have to help. We're gonna be screwed. <laughs> Ignoring Leanna's command, I unsheath my sword and charge into battle. Oh, we're gonna get so screwed here. Alright, first encounter. Click the matching icon. Okay. Uh, bam. 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 Oh, I love this. This is cool. So this is the timed events, which is what Ace Academy had that I really loved. Um, the ability to, like, you don't just get to sit passively and make decisions. And as a matter of fact, if they have what I'm hoping for, they're going to be decisions where there's, like, like it's like a timely type of decision. Like, um, you'd only have a limited window to act, and they actually had a counter. It's similar to the bar we saw at the bottom, and you have to act properly uh, in order to, like, and it makes it more reactionary and helps it feel more natural to me. It's one of the things that Pixel Fate is doing that I absolutely love. One of the reasons why I'm so avidly, like, interested in whatever they publish right now, because they're taking some of the concepts of visual novels and making these interesting twists that I've never really seen before, not at least in this way, and I love it. Leanna breathes heavily as she surveys the bodies around her. She glances at me, the stronger who, uh, and the str stranger who's still standing. Anyone hurt? I do a gentle pat down on myself and wince at my bruises. Nothing major. Leanna nods and she fidgets with her manipulator. Oh, there he is. He even looks kind of like he's trying to be an edge lord. The man stays silent as he inspects his guns. Now I have a better look at him. I realize that the, although, his, he's, his, his, although his fierce scowl makes him seem tough, he doesn't look that much older than me. His hair has a habit of falling around his eyes, but he pushes it back. And that's a large scar cut across one eye. Once satisfied, he tucks his gun back into his belt and gets on his feet. He nods to us. Thanks. Then he turns away. Wait. He pauses. Where are you headed? Why? There might be more bandits around. We should team up if we're going in the same direction. Safety in numbers. It's definitely very practical. He studies us in stony silence. Then his gaze flickers to her manipulator, and his and her and he reflexes. He relaxes slightly. Where are you going? We're headed to Illumia. Me too. Well, that's not com convenient or inconvenient at all, is it? Leanna nods. You're from the Mage Guild. Yes, I'm Leanna. I'm Protag. Zach. Boy, boy. And this is our. Yes, all of us glance at the little blue pongo who seemingly popped out of nowhere. And uh, this is our little friend. I see. Boy! Pongo blinks at Zack, who stares him down. Pongo bounces uncertainly. Boy? Yeah, I don't know. He's got weird glasses. His eyes are weird. Zack's unblinking stare never wavers, so the pongo scoots behind my leg for safety. Now that introductions are over, let's get moving. Zack waits for us to collect our things, and once we're all set, we head back to the road. Liana and I, uh, Liana and I lead the way. The Pongo keeping pace with us, while Zach hangs a few steps behind us. Interesting. Hmm. Uh, let's ask him about his weapon, because I'm curious about those guns. So, what type of gun is Zach carrying? You mean his discharger? What's a discharger? I heard the sound behind us. Zach raises an eyebrow when I turn to look at him. Did you hit your head or something? Liana looks a little uncomfortable. He's. Not exactly from around here. Yeah, ooh, that's a good point. Like, that's kind of information we might not want to just be handing out to people we randomly meet. Zach crosses his arms. I see. Oh, okay, there's a pause. So, a discharger. It's a weapon that uses crystal spheres to power it. So it is a gun. Maybe? Does it fire projectiles, or are they energy blasts? The spheres are the bullets. Well. It's kind of the magazine in some sense because it uses the to fire bullets, or in this case, bolts of energy. Lana looks uncertain. Although it made sense in my head, I can see why she would be confused. <laughs> Never mind. I got it. Thanks. Sure. She smiles. I feel Zach's gaze on me, but his expression is hard to read. Grunge. 
Alright, uh, Lana, speed. That was really cool. Lana, I saw you during the fight. How were you able to move so fast? Oh, I cast wind magic to manipulate my movements. Oh, so it's like putting on a speed buff. They're small adjustments. Like shifting the draft to move me forward. Or using a breeze to help lift me during jumps. That's pretty cool. And it'd be very, it sounds very technical and subtle. Um, which, uh, if, if it is, I know, I, I'm hoping we get to learn more about, like, the nature of magic in this world. Like, it'd be kind of cool if it were able to be more, like, definably uh, classified. Like, so I can know what's within reason and what's not. You know, what are the boundaries, what are the rule sets for the magic. But it sounds like it's very, um, finesse-based, where... Unless, it's probably not good to just go in and smash with all of your magic power all at once or else you might like, you know, you'd be useless after one hit. And so she's probably mastered the ability to use small amounts of magic and little manipulations in order to enhance her physical capabilities. Dang, that sounds awesome. She grins. The next time you're lagging behind, I'll use my wind to give you a little boost. Sweet. That would be amazing. I can already imagine myself running like the wind. Liana seems pleased by my reaction. How Zack knew she was in the Mage's Guild? How does Zack know you're in the Mage's Guild? He saw my emblem. She lifts up her arm and points at the sigil on her manipulator. What exactly does the Mage's Guild do? We investigate any type of magical anomaly. The Mage Guild in Havengard is actually headquartered in Illumia. Okay. So, it's kind of like a police force. I would say it's more like... I mean, police force maybe, but I'm guessing it's more like... Uh, more like research based it sounds like to me. They just happen to be capable warriors, which is probably how they justify their ability to do what they do. Police? Um, like how detectives go into the field to solve mysteries. Um, a little like that. Well, that makes sense to why both the guard and Meadow Hill Village and Zack relaxed after seeing Leanna's em emblem. Well, it looks like that guard was telling the truth. These definitely are bandits on the road. Yeah. There's something in her voice that makes me think she doesn't completely agree. What is it? It's just, well, for bandits, they were pretty well equipped. That's always a bad sign. That usually means they have some kind of funder. And if they have funding, that usually means that the banditry is a cover to cover something greater. Perhaps smuggling through the forest, or is a distraction for an actual attack on some kind of enemy. <coughs> she stares hard at Zack, but he doesn't react. What does that mean? Are they not bandits? Nana continues to look at Zack. I'm not sure. There it goes. Bandits. She looks sharply at Zack, obviously caught off guard. Sure. That doesn't sound too convincing. The subject drops, but I feel a little uncertainty. These guys weren't bandits, and who were they? And why were they attacking Zack? Well, they mentioned a bounty, so I'm guessing that he's got a bounty on his head, but he also seems like he'd be the bounty hunter type. The questions circle in my mind as conversation lulls into silence. Leanna leads the way through this, what, though she seems to have something on her mind. Zack trails from behind. He remains a heightened, in, a heightened alert. We travel together for quite some time with no further interruptions. I can feel my legs start to burn from all the walking. Aww, this is actually really cool. It's very pretty. Leanna squints at the sky. We should make camp before it gets dark. Zack nods. There's a good spot up ahead which hides us from view. It'll still give us visibility on any intruders, though. Hmm. Interesting way that line was delivered. I mean, I kind of like the voice actor so far, but I almost feel like he's he's trying to go for the grunge so much there might be a little lack of his like like ready emotions at least in those in that line. Sounds good. Zach leads the way and soon reach uh, and soon we reach the clearing. <clears throat> Three of the first get to work setting up camp. I roll out my bedroll near the campfire and notice how thirty, how thinly it spreads across on the ground. Can this thing really be comfortable? He's never gone camping before, has he? <laughs> I definitely have. The best pad I ever had was this little roll-up gray one. That was like it fit onto your backpack for like the longer hauls. But the problem was is that if you were on any slope whatsoever, which you're camping, you're going to be on a slope. I always woke up laying just on the flat rocks with it curled up in the corner because it's just... I just would slide right off of it with my sleeping bag. Guess there's only one way to find out. I lie down on the bedroll and place my hands behind my head. This isn't as bad as I thought. You know, it escapes, my, it escapes my lips. I could definitely fall asleep here. Ooh, oh, skyboxes. Uh, 10 out of 10 on the skyboxes right here. 
My gaze lingers on the night sky above. The moon hangs in the inky sky dotted with so many pinpricks of silver light. They sparkle vividly as if trying to chase away the dark. I breathe out of breath and wonder. If you lived in New York, and especially New York City, that would be quite a sight to see. There'd be like no light pollution in this world. Never knew the stars could shine so brightly. I try to pick out a few constellations, but the star patterns above are unfamiliar. What are you looking at? The freaking stars! <laughs> I quickly sit set up at the sound of Leanna's voice. She holds two steaming bowls in her hand. I accept one of the bowls with a smile as she sits beside me. Just admiring the sky. This place is really beautiful. Back where I live, you don't get to see many stars. How come? Light pollution. Our cities are filled with so much light that it drowns out the stars. Leanna gazes thoughtfully at the sky. Right. It's a little harder to see the stars in town than it is out here. I shake my head. It's not the same. Sometimes I don't see the stars at all. Her eyes widen in surprise. Then she places her chin on her hand. A night sky without stars. Yeah. It's kind of sad, really. She looks at me. What's your world like? Oh, man. It's weird compared to this one. Um. Mm, different, but more or less the same. You know, it's, that's true. I think... We could honestly say, like, I mean, obviously there are a lot of some very big differences, but first and foremost, it has people, and that's really the most important thing. And we have different technology, but they just have different magic technology, and so they have different priorities in how they use it. It's kind of like here, but kind of different. She stares at me, waiting for me to elaborate. We don't use crystals or have magic. We definitely don't have pongos. That's with the Pongo sneezing beside me. Leanna smiles at his soft, soft snores. But we do have forests and towns. We speak languages, have our own versions of ac academics and shops and guilds. Also have weapons and martial arts. Let Kendo. Yep. Wait, you have Kendo? Oh, no, she's reflecting what we said before. I thought she was saying they had Kendo. That sounds like it'd be an interesting place to visit. I wonder what it's like to live in a world with no crystals. Well, lots of light pollution. She tilts her head back and returns her gaze to the sky. Underneath the moonlight, her pale skin seems to glow amidst the darkness. Her face softens as she smiles. You're right. The stars really are beautiful. We fall into a comfortable silence as we enjoy the tranquility of the night. After we've finished eating and cleaning up, Zack approaches us. It's getting late. Leanna nods. I'll take first watch so you can rest. Alright. I'll take second watch. Guess that just leaves me with third. Zack stares and blinking at me while Leanna coughs nervously. That's okay. We had an early start, and I'm sure you're tired. We should rest up and sleep through the night. Well, uh, hang on. I want to be able to participate and help. I don't want to just be some baggage. Do you guys not trust me? I guess that's really kind of the answer, I want to say. <laughs> Almost sounds like you guys don't trust me. Although I try to keep my tone light and joking, Leanna looks guilty. No! That's not... I mean, it's not that we don't trust... Hey, hang on. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So you trust him more than me? Mr. Bandit Slayer more than me? Who's literally done nothing but be a stranger? Hmm, I don't know how I feel about that. Well, I'm not gonna get too insulted by it, but still. Dude, come on! We literally know nothing about this guy. Yes. <laughs> yes! Yes! <laughs> Thank you for being poignant. She looks sharply at Zack. His arms are crossed by the expression it doesn't change. Seriously? Zack nods towards Leanna. She's part of the Mage Guild, so I know she won't pull any tricks. I don't know anything about you. Alright, you know what? Fair point. You actually have some logic behind all your thinking. I'm sorry. As a fire in my mind abates, I realize Zack has a point. I've given him no reason to trust me. If I were in his shoes, I'd be just as cautious. I nod. All right, I suppose that's fair. I better get to sleep then. Good night. Good night. Zack nods. Lana flashes me one last smile before crawling into her bedroll. As she lies down, Zack positions himself against a tree and takes a seat. Mmm. I have a feeling that he's not gonna let me get to know him. Uh. I think. I, he sounds like he's not going to be quick to trust. Maybe I'll wait to get to know Zack later. I feel like it'll annoy him if I just try and get to know him, so I'm going to go to bed. I yawn widely. You should sleep too. Yeah, I think I will. He nods, I lay down in my bed roll. Before long, I fall asleep. Interesting. Well, 
was quite a fantastic start, if I do say so myself. All right, so obviously it's going to pause this. We're going to pause this here because we are going to pick up next time. So thank you so much for being here today. Uh, first impressions. I'd have to say I feel really good about it so far. Like I said, I'm seeing a lot of similar beats that I saw at Ace Academy that make me fall in love with it so much. But we've got a heightened level of quality. It's gone from just like kind of kinetic to full on kinetic, which is cool, except for the occasional like super bounce that we see. It's a little bit, you know, like alarming. But other than that, it's fine. <laughs> Uh, like I said, the, my one hiccup so far has been the voice acting for Zack, though he is kind of probably trying to cast himself as monotone and like serious and, and you know, like broody, but it kind of comes across without much emphasis or emotion to it. Um, but, I, you know, I can kind of see, like, I'm thinking of the character Angel from Buffy, and his first appearances in the show were very similar. They were so grungy, you felt like there was no real emotion behind him. So I can kind of see that this might be an inherent flaw of having a brutish character. Uh, there's very few brute characters who are easy to follow initially. However, I think there's still hope for him. And I'm hoping that we'll see more expressiveness, at least in the scenes outside of combat. Uh, just because, I don't know, if he continues to talk like that for the rest of the time, I'd be, it'll be hard to take him like super seriously as a character just because... The line delivery just feels so off. Because, I mean, to be fair, I don't know if I've ever met anyone who was genuinely broody before. Like, I've seen people who are trying to be broody, but you get to know them and then they just kind of act like normal people. So maybe, hopefully that's what he'll end up being, because that'll make him a lot more approachable as a, like a human character. He doesn't have to be approachable or likable or even like someone who wants to be friendly with you. It's just... You know, it's one of those things where voice acting can be so tough, especially because, like, you can only do so much as a voice actor, and, like, the director has to give you direction, you have to try and find that synergy. And it's something I, don't, I haven't even, like, truly experienced, but I can I guarantee you it's a lot more complicated than it sounds. But we'll have to see. So I'll, 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 I'll hold my reservation out on Zach. Uh, Leanna is a character so far, very interesting. Um, she's, like... Like, overly sweet, almost. But I'm guessing this is the nature of her character. I want to see uh, if there's more to her than, like, the chivalrous white knight. Because so far, she's kind of the stereotype. But once again, it's part one. We really don't have time to see them expanding in character depth. So, yeah. Anyway, enough about my blabbing. Thank you so much for watching this. Uh, next week, you can look forward to an episode of this on every Wednesday, assuming nothing crazy happens where I have to just go apart. But remember, this is a hobby. It's not a job. So my, my priorities have to be, you know, like family, uh, my health, and then the YouTube channel. But so far, I have very rarely had to miss times in my past that didn't involve some major catastrophes. Uh, and once again, if you're new to the channel, welcome. I hope you feel interested in sticking around and watching more of our stuff. I also highly recommend you see some of my older series. Um, I've enjoyed making all of them. If it's really, really old, the quality is not as good, but you know, that's the whole nature of doing this is that you slowly get better at editing, you get better equipment, you get better at everything, and then you have what's current, and this is as flashy and as, as fun as it's going to get. Um, Ace Academy is fantastic. If you didn't play that or you were interested in seeing how I reacted to that, I highly recommend to you to check that out. I'll probably put a link up in like the top tag here for that one. And ultimately, I just hope you stick around because you know what? Having people like you watching this, it's really what makes this channel go. I can sit here and make videos all I want, and that's fine. Like, I actually enjoy that. But it's you guys talking with me, giving me your opinions about what I say. And more importantly, just reacting and telling me the things that you were impressed with. Like, that's what really matters to me. Please, 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 if you've already played this game, hold back on the spoilers. We want to get my, my good reactions based on what's actually happening. Um, if I think you're going to be spoiling in a comment, I usually stop reading. Um, but yeah, just just do all that. I'm also going to put stuff on a Discord. So if you want to chat with some of the other people who are watching this series and are curious what they're thinking about, like the way I've been playing or, the, or what they thought of the certain scenes, you can check on the Discord. It'll be active chat. There'll be spoiler chat that I won't even look at that you can just talk to your heart's content about whatever's happening in the future. Um, but ultimately, you guys are what make this channel awesome. So get to know one another. Say hi to me and to someone else. I'll do my best to answer all of your comments to the, to the best of my ability. I usually pop on Discord every once in a while and I'll, I'll just add whatever I can think of to the current chat that's going on. And just, I don't know, stick around and see if there's something you like. 
And thanks again if you're if you're new if you're one of the uh, current subscribers, the current audience, the current people who are just kind of checking out the new series. I hope you like this one. I hope this caught your interest enough that you're interested to see more of it because I'm certainly excited to see the rest of it. So thank you all so much for being here. Thank you so much for spending your time with me on this channel. And until the next video you watch with me or whatever you happen to see me in next, I'll see you there.